Hey, hey, so this video is going to be focused on migrating from Zapier over to Pabli. I bought Pabli a while ago um, on a lifetime deal, but never actually transferred anything over. And as you guys can see, I have 42 tasks that are in here that I'm going to be transferring over, um, most of which I can easily transfer and some of which I have to just make sure Pabli is compatible with. So I'm going to take you guys through that journey. Um, the first thing I want to actually start with is how I actually organize my journey for my clients. So I take the time to use Milano and map out my entire journey from lead to book to book to offwitting to back end setup. This has been very useful for me. And as I always switch tools, I kind of get lost in the sauce because I really do purchase a lot of tools from AppSumo um, and I want to make sure I stay on track. So the newest tool that I've implemented, I've switched out from Sweet Dash because I'm testing a new baby. It's Moxie is I actually use Moxie for everything. Um, like client portal related right now. Um, but I'm going to dive all into that later. The first thing I want to do is just primarily focus on my switchover. So I am working on the first portion of it. And I want to show you guys how I actually organize my Zapier and how I'm organizing my Pabli to show you how all the things make sense to me. Um, so I, I don't know if it works for everyone, but I do use folders inside of Zapier because folders have been very effective in terms of just separating what um, is, you know, all the things. Um, and so what I moved, I'm literally just putting the notation move to Pabli. I might have, um, like abbreviated to say MTB just so that I could be able to kind of save typing space. Um, and so I currently have a few different ways people can connect with me. Either it's through Wix because you know sometimes you get lost with e like the way that people are able to connect. So you may have had a Wix booking link before or they may be able to fill out a form and that form still works. So there are three different ways currently. Traft is a lifetime deal that I purchased and sometimes there are links out there with that Traft link that I can't just get rid of. So I have to make sure that I move this over and I have Wix forms. That is also another way people can get in touch with me. And then now because I use Moxie for everything, it basically is the next way that people can get in contact with me. So these three setups are exactly the same. The only thing is, is that it's coming from different um, triggers. And so I'm moving those over. So let's quickly look into Pabli. So for my Pabli right now, I'm starting to build out the folders. As you can see, I'm building out the uh, client zaps because sometimes I create zaps for clients. And sometimes I have to just put them in a, a place that makes the most sense. And then I have my lead to book, which is what I'm going to be starting to build out now. As you can see, I already started to do two of them. So I'm making clones and I'm just starting for Wix and I've already done Moxie. So I'm going to do Wix and I'm going to do Traft. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how I'm actually setting it up because it's pretty easy to do it. I, for the most part, have already completed the one for Wix. This is the one I'm doing for Wix now. So I'm just finishing it up. So the trigger is going to be Wix Forms. There are two different types of apps for Wix. There's the Wix actual eight automations and then there's Wix Forms. So the new form submission, it's going to be a webhook like most of the things that I've noticed inside of Pavly R, which is completely fine. They're AI. Um, they, they have API. So perfect. Um, and then what it does is it pulls over the responses. So let me rewind a little bit. What exactly is automation? So automation is the ability to reduce the manual need or manual labor of your physical being. Um, so you allow this tool to actually do all the work for you. And this tool specifically is Pavly. And with Pavly, I'm able to say if someone fills out a Wix form and it has a filter on here that says, hey, if the form actually is for this kind of service, then move forward. And what I'm doing here is I'm utilizing this Wix form tool or app, and I'm taking this webhook and I'm connecting it into the actual tool itself, which is on the automation screen here. And so currently, if you go to automations in Wix, and then you go down to the, you could add a new automation. It's completely fine if you just, I have one that's already here. So um, what I'm doing is I'm telling Wix what I need it to do. And I'm going to actually rename this so that I can remember what I did this for. 
Um, and so the trigger is going to be a Wix booking. That is what is the trigger that I'm looking for. And if a session is booked, which is this session here, which is going to be the less chat session, which I've already kind of tested it. So if the less chat session is booked, then I'm going to go ahead and send the webhook. So the webhook is that link that I actually showed you guys earlier. So it's that link here that kind of says, hey, if you're going to do this thing, then send the information to Pabli. So it sends that webhook. And then it also says, hey, OK, after a minute delay, I want you to send an email. This I'm keeping in here because it's just easy. Uh, so it will send an automated email from me using my email. And then it will just send it to that um, the, the form recipient. Once that is done, then Pabli is going to take over the work and it's going to say, all right, so I got some information. I got the email. I got the details. And now I need you to tell me what else to do. So I've created an action step. The action step will allow me to move forward with whatever automation I want. So whatever thing I don't want to do manually, it's going to do it for me. So in this case, it's going to go ahead and filter the actual service name because I could have a service name called virtual chat. I could have a service name called strategy session. I could have a strategy, you know, any kind of service name, but I want it to specifically move forward if the service name includes or contains let's chat. In this case, it was successful. So you can see that it's a message of condition is true because it clearly is the let's chat call. I want it to create a ClickUp task. Inside of ClickUp, I currently track all of my leads. So I'm seeing all the things, but when a new class comes in, what happens is that it will create a task here and it will actually pull all the information that I'm telling it to pull and put it here. So instead of me just doing that, I could have just tested it, but it's creating the action event, which is creating tasks with custom fields. There's a ton of them that you can choose from. I chose this one because I do have custom fields that I want it to fill out. Um, and so it would automatically populate or you will manually have to map the actual location where you want it to go. Let me slow down again. So workspace is going to be associated with your workspace inside of ClickUp. So if you don't know what workspaces are, ClickUp has different workspaces. And I'm going to do a ton more videos about spaces and workspaces and all the things inside of ClickUp. But for the baseline of this, what happens is that ClickUp says, hey, I want to put this in this workspace. I want to then add it to this specific space because the workspace is, think of it like a business entity. Then you have a space, so think of it as a department. The folder, think of it like a, um, hmm, let's think of it like a manager, okay, if we're talking about business. And then you have the list itself. The manager, think about it like an employee, all right? We're just kind of slowing it down. But in that sense, we are then going to create the task name. So this is going to be a very fun space to choose whatever you want. However, in this case, you can also pull data from the previous steps. So I can pull data from the Wix form that was already populated from that webhook, or I can pull it from somewhere else. In this case, it's just going to be the Wix form because the other section is a filter that just says, hey, this actually is what you want it to be. So I'm pulling it from the actual um, Wix form. I pull the test name. And then I'm going to leave the text um, as just, you know, a text uh, actual content because that's just, you know, what it is. Don't have to mess with that. The description, I can add what I want here. Um, in this case, I normally try to add like custom field items. I know that this looks like gibberish, but right now um, it makes sense because what I'm seeing is data. So this data, even though it doesn't show an actual name of the field, it is the data for the field that was filled out. So I'm pulling that information as well so that I can be able to get all of that information. And I'm pulling all three of those. The assignee is going to be me because I'm the one in the space. And then I don't need any tags added. This is all subjected to your flow. Um, the, pri the priority, I don't need to make a priority, but I could add a priority if I wanted to. I could add a due date to be the due date for the actual date of the um, calendar um, scheduled date. I don't need that. Start date, I could do the same thing. Um, and also I can fill in the, for my custom fields, I can actually pull the data from the form again, which I'm using for the email. 
And I have a checkbox on my custom fields that says, hey, do you want this to actually, um, you know, do anything for these custom fields? I don't need it for this particular one because of the fact that a lot of this data is not going to be utilized, um, but I'm pulling the data that I do need. So pulling all the things and then after pulling them, I'm going to make sure that I have all the things that I need. This is the company name here. Um, and then I'm going to just go ahead and hit save and test. And you guys are going to see the actual test that populates. Oops. Okay. So what it's saying me to saying to me is that the field for the um, phone number is incorrect. So I have two fields here for phone number because I have a text field and I also have a, a phone number field. And sometimes the field itself gives me an error if the phone number is not formatted right. So it looks like it's this one. So I'm going to actually put this one in the text field. Um, and then that should be that. And now if I test it, what it's going to do is it's going to respond with the actual data that was presented. So now if I go over here, you remember I made the Marie, but now you see Marie 1 because this is what pulls over from the actual test. So you saw the custom fields that I pulled in. And if I wanted to, I could actually just add these fields here. But I could literally map this out the way that I want to. And it will come out as beautiful as it did there. The next thing that I also wanted to do is send a text message. So um, what it's going to do is it's going to utilize the Ring Central app that I have. It's going to send the text because that's the action that I want it to do. And then I've already put in my account number and all the things. It's sending me the actual um, phone number that I'll be using. And then I need to update this because this was from a previous one. But the recipient phone number is going to be the contact number in this sense. And then the name is going to also be different because this was a different field. So I'm going to put the first name here. And then I'm going to send a test. So even though you guys are not going to be able to see the test that I sent, this is the test that was sent just a second ago. I just received it on my phone, but you can see that this is the test that just got sent at 922, which is exactly right now. That's what's sent out. And this completes my entire flow. Okay, so I'm going to hit save. I like to be very organized. So what I like to do is make sure that I'm naming it something that makes sense to me. So I'm going to rename this because it's no longer going to be Moxie. I'm going to put Wix. Let's chat because that is the name of the call that is here. And it would still be a click up lead and it would still be a ring central text because that's exactly what's happening. I'm getting someone to schedule or someone has scheduled a let's chat call. They are doing they're going to be added to a click up lead um, list and then they're going to get a text message. So once I've done that, I'm very organized. I'm going to move this over to the lead to booked um, folder and voila. So now inside of my um, Zapier account, I'm going to turn this off because I no longer need it to duplicate. And I'm going to rename this. As I told you guys, I'm probably going to call it MTB. Move to Pabli. And so because I moved it to Pabli, oh, I didn't save it. Ah. All right, let's put MTB. There we go. So because I moved this probably I can literally turn it off. And it's literally the best thing that I've ever done in my life. Ah, now this is the one I renamed. Don't be this way. Don't be this way. Okay, so I'm just going to rename this one as well. Bam. All right, so I've turned that off. And I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of these. I hope that you enjoyed this. I do have a nice zap, um, you know, check fun list coming out. <laughs> that was a little bit of a blur, but I do have a um, fundamental uh, zap list coming out just because I thought that it was so amazing how things that I've created in Zapier has been so beneficial to me that I literally want to share it with the world. So like, for example, when I receive a certain item, I want to make sure that it sends out a welcome guide to someone. Or when I get a new client, I want to make sure that it actually sends a request to, it sends a, ch a channel chat things like that. So stay tuned for that. And I hope that you enjoy this video.